Alpha Centauri is a system of three stars only four light years away from the solar system, making it the closest stellar system to our own. For decades, humans have been studying Alpha Centauri and the planets that have been discovered in it, but despite this, very little is known about the worlds of this system. But what do we know? What are the planets of Alpha Centauri and what are they like? And what technologies are being developed to further explore the system and find new worlds here? Welcome to part one of my grand tour series, where I explore some of the most well-known places outside the solar system in more depth. Before we start, I should add a disclaimer that because the study of exoplanets is so new, there will inevitably be new discoveries after the making of this video. So I will miss things because I can't predict the future. If you're watching this a few months or years from the time I'm publishing this, make sure to check to see if the things I say are still accurate. With that out of the way, let's start the video. The first and closest member of the Alpha Centauri system to Earth is Proxima Centauri, a dim red dwarf slightly closer to us than the rest of the system. Proxima Centauri is an extremely wide orbit around the Alpha Centauri Berry Center, which is the common center of mass of the system. Because of this huge distance, which is over 12,000 astronomical units, it's still debated if Proxima Centauri is even part of the Alpha Centauri system at all, but the evidence so far suggests that it is. If this is the case, then Proxima Centauri is actually at Apoapsis, or the furthest point away from the object it's orbiting. Proxima stands between 12,000 and 13,000 AU away from the rest of Alpha Centauri right now, but on its orbit, which takes about 550,000 years to complete, it can get as close to the other stars as 4,000 AU. Proxima Centauri is also notoriously violent, emitting huge stellar flares far bigger than anything the Sun can produce. The star has been known to emit several Carrington event-level flares in a matter of years, the Carrington event being a massive solar flare released by the Sun in the 1800s that was powerful enough to allow auroras to be seen in the Caribbean and shorted out telegraph systems worldwide. The Sun releases flares like this on a timescale of centuries, not years like Proxima Sen. This would have huge consequences for the inner two of Proxima's three known planets. This is Proxima D, the first of Proxima Sen's planets. It's about one-fourth the size of Earth, or about three times bigger than Mars. It takes just five days to orbit Proxima Centauri, and so is bombarded by radiation. Proxima D has an estimated temperature, assuming no atmosphere, of 188 degrees Fahrenheit. Because of its small mass and close distance to a notorious flare star, Proxima D likely has little to no atmosphere. However, thanks to tidal interactions between it, the star, and Proxima B, the second planet, it could have widespread volcanic activity, making it an airless supervolcanic world similar to Jupiter's moon Io or Trappist-1b. The second planet of the system is Proxima b, a roughly Earth-mass planet that takes just 11 days to orbit the star. Proxima b is particularly famous because it's within the habitable zone of Proxima Centauri. It's currently unknown if Proxima b is habitable or not, but with what we know so far, I think it's pretty safe to say that Proxima b is an uninhabitable, irradiated desert that would make Mars or Venus look like paradises. I explain in detail why Proxima b probably isn't habitable in a separate video, link in the description. But the short version is, it's probably tidally locked to its star, has an atmosphere constantly stripped away by flares, likely formed with little to no water, and the third planet, Proxima c, is in a perfect position to launch asteroids toward the planet. Proxima d is even worse off than b, only a quarter the size of Earth and far hotter, though it could have potentially Earth-like temperatures on its poles. So far, that's all that's known about the inner Proxima system. Two rocky exoplanets likely volcanically active, but with no atmosphere and no day-night cycle. These planets are almost certainly uninhabitable, but they're still extremely interesting. These two worlds are a perfect example of what the average inner system of Red Dwarf probably looks like. Small, rocky planets on tight orbits like this are probably common throughout the galaxy. But going further away from Proxima Centauri, the third and final currently known planet of the system comes into view, Proxima C. I already have a full video about Proxima C, and it's my personal favorite planet of the Proxima Centauri system. It's still debated if Proxima C even exists at all. There's some evidence that it doesn't, but it's been detected by two separate methods by two different telescopes, so there's strong evidence that it does. So, I'll assume it does exist in this video. More information about this in my Proxima C video. Proxima C has two things that make it unique from B and D. It's over seven times the mass of Earth and as far away from its star as Mars is from the Sun, both of which mean that Proxima C very likely possesses an atmosphere. Of course, that assumes it's rocky. Planets this massive can go one of two ways. They can be large, rocky planets like the 8 Earth mass planet Janssen or 55 Cancri E. They can become more like an ice giant, becoming mini Neptunes, like the exoplanet Ni Potia or GJ1214b. It's unknown which one Proxima C is. However, because of its extremely cold temperature of negative 389 degrees Fahrenheit, it likely has an icy composition. This means that it's much more likely to be a mini-Neptune than a rocky planet. 
The second thing that makes Proxima C unique is that it may have rings. After the planet was potentially directly imaged, it was far brighter than expected, which could mean it possesses a ring system five times bigger than Saturn's. However, it's unknown if the image was actually of Proxima C, and it could have been an unrelated background object. So, Proxima C's rings remain unconfirmed. The Proxima Centauri system is the most studied area of the Greater Alpha Centauri system, but there are two other stars in the system. Both are far bigger than Proxima, with Alpha Centauri B being a bit smaller than the Sun, and Alpha Centauri A a bit bigger. As of the time of making this video, neither of these stars have any confirmed planets, but that could change in the near future. The Tolemon Telescope, which should launch this year, has the specific purpose of searching for planets around nearby stars, with Alpha Centauri A and B as main targets. It's possible that in just a few years from now, we can know several new planets around these stars. But for now, there's only one planet candidate around both these stars, a gas giant orbiting Alpha Centauri A. This is the creatively named Candidate 1, or Alpha Centauri AB. Candidate 1's mass is a high amount of uncertainty, mainly because we don't actually know if it exists or not. But if it does, it's likely between the masses of Neptune and Saturn. Most notably, it's within the habitable zone of Alpha Centauri A. This means that it could have temperatures right for liquid water to exist. Of course, being a gas giant, it can't really host lakes and oceans. However, because of these temperatures, it could have huge layers of water clouds, just like Earth's clouds, only on a much bigger scale. This would make the planet look white from space, assuming it has no haze. If it does have haze, like our gas giants do, then it probably looks fairly similar to Saturn and Jupiter. Candidate 1 could potentially host habitable moons. Alpha Centauri A is much calmer than Proxima Centauri, so any moons large enough to host an atmosphere would have an easier time keeping it than Proxima B or D. However, this is unlikely. Looking at the moons of Uranus, they're all small, airless balls of rock too small to be habitable. Neptune only has a large moon, Triton, because it captured it when it was a dwarf planet. Titan is the exception in the Saturnian moon system, with all other moons also being airless balls of rock. Earth's moon is similarly airless. Taking all this into account, we can make a realistic guess for what any hypothetical moon system of Candidate 1 could be like. It's most likely that all of its moons, should it have any large ones, are uninhabitable. But as I said about Proxima b, planets don't have to be habitable to be interesting. Other than Tartarian planets, which I've made a full video about, Temperate Ice Giants are one of my favorite types of planet. Not because they could be habitable, but simply because of how interesting their environments would be. Hopefully, Candidate 1 is confirmed to exist sometime soon. However, other than Candidate 1, it's unknown how many planets Alpha Centauri A and B could host. Both stars are in a very unlucky position from each other. They're close enough to each other that the gravitational forces of both stars would have made forming planets in the system at all difficult, but they're also far enough away from each other that any circumbinary planets, or planets orbiting both stars at once, are exceedingly unlikely. They're too close to form close-in planets, but too far apart for circumbinary planets. So, any planets would have a difficult time forming around Alpha Centauri A or B, so I wouldn't be surprised if there aren't many planets around either of them. But, that doesn't mean they're impossible, and if Candidate 1 is confirmed, it could mean that other unseen planets exist around them too. In total, across the entire Alpha Centauri system, there are two confirmed planets, Proxima B and D, one disputed planet, Proxima C, and one unconfirmed planet candidate, Candidate 1. Next to nothing is known about every single one of these worlds, and there could be potentially more planets that we haven't detected yet. I already mentioned the Tolemon Telescope and how it could potentially find more planets in the system, but how could we explore them? Alpha Centauri is the closest system to Earth, surely we could send something to it. So far, there have been a few plans to send probes to Alpha Centauri, the most famous of which being Breakthrough Starshot, where a swarm of thousands of solar sail powered spacecraft would arrive at Proxima Centauri and take close-up pictures of the planets. However, for multiple reasons I won't get into in this video, Breakthrough Starshot isn't likely to happen, at least not for a few decades. There's also a technology concept called Solar Gravitational Lens, which, in simple terms, is a telescope that travels 500 to 1000 AU away from the Sun, where the Sun's gravity bends light in such a way it acts like a telescope lens. If we lined up a solar gravitational lens perfectly with Alpha Centauri, the Sun, and the telescope all in a perfectly straight line, we could get pictures of the planets of the system that could be 1000 pixels wide, a huge improvement over today's exoplanet pictures, which are only 1 or 2 pixels wide at best. This would also take a very long time, like Breakthrough Starshot. But unlike Breakthrough Starshot, a solar gravitational lens doesn't require unfeasible amounts of energy. So, I think this is our most likely option for seeing real, detailed pictures of the planets of Alpha Centauri in our lifetime is a solar gravitational lens. Alpha Centauri is unique because of its close distance to Earth, 
allowing for much more detailed studies of its planets. But so far, they remain just outside our reach, but near future technologies, some of which are planned to launch this year in 2024, could drastically change our understanding of the system, and give us our first detailed looks at the planets of another star system. I wouldn't be surprised if within our lifetime, we have detailed pictures of the planets of Alpha Centauri, and maybe other nearby stars too. And who knows, maybe one day, we'll send humans to this incredible place, and we'll see the first people walk on the surface of Proxima B, or orbit in stations above Candidate 1. We just have to get there. But Alpha Centauri won't be nearby forever. Stars are constantly moving throughout the Milky Way, at multiple miles per second. Day by day, this doesn't amount to much, since a few hundred miles against the quadrillions of miles of space aren't very noticeable. But over long time scales, this motion becomes much more apparent. Alpha Centauri is currently 4.2 light years away from us, and moving closer. In about 24,000 years, it'll reach its closest distance to the Sun, at just 2.9 light years. This will make the system the second brightest star in the night sky, after Sirius. But after this, the motions of both Alpha Centauri and the Sun will send the two systems apart forever. The far future of the Alpha Centauri system is similar to our own. In a few billion years, Alpha Centauri A will become a red giant, consuming whatever inner planets it has before becoming a white dwarf. The smaller Alpha Centauri B will follow after it. Proxima Centauri, however, will live for much longer. Being a small red dwarf, it likely has 4 trillion years left before it becomes a white dwarf. During this time, it's likely that some other large object, like a star or black hole, will detach Proxima Centauri from the rest of the system, because, thanks to its large distance, it's only very weakly bound gravitationally to Alpha Centauri A and B. This makes any disturbances with other stars have a much more drastic effect on Proxima Centauri, so it wouldn't take as much force to eject the star from the rest of the system. Like all star systems, Alpha Centauri won't be here forever. We have an incredibly unique opportunity to study this place from relatively close by, and it's one we can't let go to waste. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets, as well as my colonization of the solar system series.